Hello everyone and welcome to my LabVIEW channel for all you LabVIEW enthusiasts. Today's topic is state machines. State machines are extremely powerful. It's one of the quickest ways to build an application. A state machine is essentially a program that dynamically transitions from one state to another depending on the values from the previous state, which can also be determined by user inputs. For example, a program could be at an idle state waiting for some sort of event to take place such as pressing the start button. Only then it will transition onto the next state, which can be something like a state that asks the user to enter their name into a dialog box, and so on. I've been using state machines for at least 13 years, and I don't see a reason to deviate from that. Although there are several different ways to develop a state machine, I'll begin with one of the simplest ways so not to confuse anyone. I will get into more sophisticated variations in future videos. Here's a list of things that you will uh, need in order to make a state, state machine. So here are some of the steps. So the first thing you'll need is uh, to create a while loop, uh, add while loop shift register, add case structure, modify case structure and add cases, wire up shift register to case structure, and then final uh, is debug. So let's get started. So open up LabVIEW, uh, open up a new VI, uh, you'll get your block diagram and your front panel. You can separate these so you can see the work on one screen. If you go to Windows, you can do tile left and right or tile up and down. Or Control T is a sh quick shortcut to do the same thing. So let's go, uh, let's go with left and right. Okay, there we go. So now we have our front panel on one side and we have the block diagram on the other side. So the first thing we want to do is create a while loop. Okay, so in order to do that, you will right click on the blank area of the block diagram and you go to structures, then you select while loop, then you set your while loop on the block diagram like this. Then you want to uh, set a condition for your while loop like this. So the condition here we're going to select is, uh, let's do stop if true, or we can uh, continue if true, or we can just create a constant. So let's just go ahead and create a constant and we'll make it a false uh, constant. The other neat thing here is if you want to, uh, you can write comments anywhere in LabVIEW, so you just double click and you can just type anything you want. So if you want to comment your code, it's fairly easy to do. Uh, but, uh, but for this while loop, since it's my main while loop, what I'm going to do is I will show uh, the sub diagram label and I'll call this, uh, uh, call this main state machine while loop. Okay, so this is the main while loop. Without this, uh, you can't really uh, create a state machine. Okay, so the next step you're gonna need is you're gonna have to add a shift register. So you right click on the edge here, and what you do is you select add shift register. And that's fairly easy. Next, you're gonna wanna add a case structure. And here's your case structure. Put it down the middle here. So um, when you use, utilize a case structure, it automatically, um, uh, it automatically is set to a Boolean state. So in LabVIEW, green is Boolean, which is, uh, which is uh, true or false. So in this case, uh, you, uh, we're, th this, this case structure is going to have many states. It's basically going to hold all the code for your state machine. So what I like to do is... Uh, go to the false uh, case structure, which is the default uh, case. Or, or what you can do is you can actually wire your shift register first and then start passing through uh, the wire to the uh, case structure. And I'll show you how to do that. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm not going to use an enum. I'm just going to use a string. Uh, and strings are pink in LabVIEW. Uh, so I'm going to go to function, string, palette. And I'm just going to uh, grab a string, string constant and place it here, wire that up to the shift register, and then wire that up to the case structure like that. And as you can see, the 
false case is the default case, but in this case, I'm going to call it error. So if there's an error, a syntax error, or, or uh, you know, you're missing something uh, in your in your code, it will automatically default to an error state. And what I like to do is in this error uh, state, I like to put a, I like to go to the functions palette and go to um, dialog and user interface, and just add a one uh, button dialog. Uh, this this is so it, uh, LabVIEW can tell you that you have a case error. So in this case, the message will be create content. The message will be uh, case error. So case error, and in order to dismiss it, once it pops up, we'll create a, another constant, and we'll call this OK. So the button here will be an OK button, and pressing the OK button will uh, uh, get rid of the pop-up and, and, uh, and get rid of the message. So the next step uh, you want to do is you want to add more cases to your program. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll add a case after default. We know right now by default it's true, but we'll we'll call this let's say start. So the program will start in here, so we'll call it start. And in order for the program to start here, in this case, we're going to have to name uh, this string start. So when the program opens, uh, it'll automatically go right to the start case. So uh, it'll automatically utilize the code that's in this structure here. So in there, what we can do is we can put a simple start button like this. So this start button is basically, I'm just going to create a, a while loop inside this case, and I'm going to wire it to a control, and then this control should appear on the front panel as soon as I create it. So let's right click, and we'll call this, uh, we'll uh, select create control. And as you can see, this is what will stop this loop uh, from running. And once this loop stops running, it should transition to the next case, which we're going to create by wiring a, a string constant here to the shift register like that. So here, the next state we want to go to is probably, let's say, an initialized state. We want to initialize, maybe clear some indicators or bring some values to zero or clear some Booleans, so on and so forth. So here we'll call this init for initialize. And as you can see here, there's no init uh, case. So what we're going to do is we're going to just right click here. We're going to get add a case after. And there you have it. And here we are just call this init. And so once uh, the program jumps out of this loop by the user pressing the start button, and we'll change the name of this to start. So this is our start button. Uh, we'll call this start. Start. And then what we're going to do is we'll also in here, so our processor doesn't uh, go into overdrive, what we'll do is we'll put a, uh, a timer in here so it'll wait for, let's say, every 100 milliseconds. So this loop will go every 100 milliseconds, uh, which should be enough. Okay, so the next step now is we're in the init state. We'll leave this blank. We'll say from init, we'll, we'll make this a real simple program. From, from init, we'll go to, let's say, uh, we'll do some sort of maybe a random number generator that will control some sort of, uh, some sort of uh, level indicator or, or something like that. So we'll call it, let's see, we'll add a case after. Add case after, we'll call it uh, measure temp maybe. And we'll call it uh, measure temp. Okay. And then this case, uh, so we'll go back here and in it, and we'll create a constant. And we'll call this one measure, measure. And you got to be very careful here. Make sure the uh, 
the syntax here is exactly the same as the syntax up here, or it'll jump to a case error, and I'll show you that in a bit. Okay, so here, let's go back to the start state. So create a constant, and we'll say start. Okay, so our program should loop around back to start once it completes, and then initialize again, and so on and so forth. So let's go here, here. Okay, um, we just didn't wire this this one here. So here we can create a constant and we'll say start. So we always want our program to go back to start. Okay, so we start, uh, it goes to initialize, and let's say initialize, uh, it'll uh, maybe maybe here we'll, we'll create some sort of code, and then in it we'll uh, maybe, or actually let's just create a pop-up pop up that asks the user for some information. So let's do that real quick. So dialog, uh, we'll say, uh, uh, we'll, we'll say prompt user, let's say, which is an easy function. We'll say, uh, we'll input uh, text entry box and message will say, what is your name? And then the person will put their name in the text entry box, and we'll say OK. There we go. And maybe we'll have uh, an output here. So we'll create an indicator, and the person could put their name in there, as you can see. They'll hit Start. This pop-up will come up, and then they'll enter their name and hit the OK button, and it will go to... Uh, Let's say uh, here we're going to measure temperature. We'll add a random number generator. Let's say uh, in order to in order to create some sort of uh, output into some sort of indicator over here. We'll go to let's say a numeric. Uh, let's say a thermometer. Okay, and we'll wire this thermometer. It it will automatically pop up on your uh, block diagram as well. So you grab it. You wire it up, and there you have it. This thing will generate some sort of value in here, some random number, and then it'll go back to the start state. Um, and here, let's go back to init. Uh, init will also clear. Will also clear this thermometer. So in here, we what we can do is we can create uh, a local variable, which will be a thermometer, and we'll create a constant here and we'll keep it at zero. So every time it initializes, this will go back down to zero and then it, uh, the program will transition back to start. Okay, so if I look at this arrow here, there's no errors and we'll run our simple state machine. Okay, so let's uh, highlight execution and we'll watch this run as it transitions from state to state. So again, it'll start in the start case and it'll move from there. So I'm gonna run it. There you have it, it transitions to start. This is false because I haven't pressed the start button yet. So as soon as I press the start button, this will transition to true, stop this loop, and it'll go to the next case, which is in it. So let's do that. And then that'll clear the thermometer, and it'll ask the user to put in their name, and then it will transition to a random number generator, which will give us a value here in this thermometer, and then it'll go back to start. Okay, so let me press start to stop that loop and you can watch a transition. True, stops the loop. Now it's gonna go to init and it's gonna, uh, temperature's gonna go to zero and it's gonna ask the name. So I'm gonna put, uh, I'll put a name, I'll, I'll put a random name there and I'll hit okay. The name shows up, it goes to measure, random number says 0.39 and then it goes back to start. And of course, 0.39 is not gonna register here. You're not gonna see nothing, but what we can do is we can run it again this time. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an error in the syntax, and you'll see that the pop-up that will come up is the, um, the error uh, case pop-up. So let's stop it, and let's say here, I'll put, a, uh, I'll put a, I'll make a mistake here. Let's say in it, I'll put like a, let's say, a, an underscore and so if I run the program again and I hit the start button 
this should give me a case error telling me that there's a problem with my code. So there you go. So it defaulted to case error. And that's why you uh, do that here, which will help you uh, uh, figure out problems with your code. So now you press OK. It'll go back to start. And we'll stop the program right now. We'll fix this. And for the random number, uh, instead of a random number, what I'll do is I'll just hard code a I'll hard code some sort of number here. Maybe we'll we'll put it to 60, 60 degrees, and we'll rerun this. And we'll hit start. And it will go back to here where you put your name in, you say okay. And then thermometer goes up to 60 and the code transitions back to start. So now the user can run his program again. And every time they hit start, the program will run again. So if I hit start, it'll go through it again. There you go, thermometer goes to zero. I'll put in a random name. And the thermometer goes back up to 60 and it goes back to start. There you have it, that's a simple state machine uh, using LabVIEW and it doesn't get easier than that. Uh, there are some complicated uh, state machines out there, but once you understand this concept, uh, they're all pretty much the same. Uh, here you don't have to use a string. You can use an enum. Uh, you can use uh, uh, different, different models and different variations of state machines that uh, are quite interesting, but to get you started and this one's pretty powerful. So if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Subscribe to my channel. Uh, the next video will be, uh, I'll add to the state machine. Maybe I'll add a way to create a, a CSV file and to put your data into a, into a folder on, on your machine or on your network. Uh, and then maybe after that, we'll get, into, uh, we'll get into databases and connecting to databases and transition your da data to a database. However, uh, just send me a message, let me know what you guys are interested in, and I'll be more than happy to create that video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it.